greater emphasis on low energy building design, we're hearing more and more about thermal bridging. Unfortunately, in many sections of our industry, it's not fully understood. So today we're going to look at why thermal bridging is so important. Firstly, we look at what is thermal bridging. To explain this, we need to cover U-values. A U-value measures heat loss per square metre out through all our building elements. That is, out through a wall, down through our floors, up through our roof, and out through our windows and doors. But unfortunately what U-values don't cover is the heat loss at the junction between these elements. For example, our floor to wall junctions, our wall to roof junctions, our corner junctions, and around our windows and doors. And this is what's known as thermal bridging. If we move over then to look at this common construction detail, here we have our floor insulation and our wall insulation and our U-values measure the heat loss per square metre down through our floor and out through our wall. What it doesn't measure is the heat loss at the junction between those two insulations. So because the two insulations don't meet, we have significant heat loss out through that junction. And again, that's what's known as thermal bridging. Thermal bridging is measured in terms of psi values, and psi value is heat loss per linear metre of each junction, and is calculated using computer modelling software. So how do we deal with this then in our BER calculations? In our BER calculations, we have to apply a thermal bridging factor. This is known as the Y factor. To calculate the Y factor, we take the psi value of each junction and multiply it by the length of each junction. And the combination of these for every junction in your building divided by the envelope area, which is the area of your floors, your walls and your roof, this gives us our Y factor. So how then do we deal with thermal bridging within part L? Basically we have three options. First option is to use a default Y factor of 0 0.15. We would use this factor if we didn't follow any set of construction details. But in almost all cases, 0 0.15 is a gross overestimation of the heat loss through thermal bridging and it should be avoided. The second option then is to use a Y factor of 0 0.08. We can use this Y factor if we use the DOE acceptable construction details. And whilst 0 0.08 is a lot better than 0 0.15, it still can be improved upon. So if we look at an example then, how these Y factors affect the heat loss within the deep software. So in the example we've taken a house with an average U value of 0 0.16. When we apply a default Y factor of 0 0.15 to that, essentially what the deep software is doing is adding 0 0.15 to our average U value of 0 0.16 to give a heat loss of 0 0.31 watts per meter squared Kelvin. That's a massive 48% heat loss to thermal bridging, and that's in no way accurate. So as I say, that should be avoided. Looking then at the example for the default value of 0 0.08, what the deep software does is add 0 0.08 to our average U value of 0 0.16 to give a heat loss of 0 0.24 watts per meter squared Kelvin. That equates to 33% of heat loss through thermal bridging. While it's a lot better than 48%, it's still not accurate. The third option 
for dealing with thermal bridging within part L is to calculate the wave factor based on the method we've shown here. And this is the option which we encourage BER assessors to use. To calculate the wave factor using this method, we need the say value for each junction in the building. Thermally modeling each junction can be costly and time consuming. So in Quinlate, we've done that for you. What we have done is taken the DOE acceptable construction details and where possible introduce quinlate blocks into those details to improve the performance of the junction. So if we look here, this junction we looked at earlier, what we've done is introduced two quinlate blocks at the key location to provide continuity of insulation across the junction. And by introducing those two quinlate blocks, we've improved the thermal performance of that junction by 10 times. All our junctions have been developed and approved by an NSAA accredited thermal modeler. So if we look then at our example, using our quinlate construction details, we can calculate wave factors as low as 0.0. .0 1.5. So when we add this to our average U value, we get a heat loss of 0 0.175 watts per, per meter squared Kelvin. So looking at that then, comparing it to our default values, the percentage heat loss using our quinlate construction details is 8.5%. Which is a significant improvement on the two default values. And this is the method which we should be using. As well as reducing heat loss, which results in long term savings and energy bills, improving your thermal bridges also reduces your construction costs. And because of higher surface temperatures at junctions, we also eliminate the risk of mold growth and improves the comfort factor of our dwellings as well. So how does Quinlate compare to the other alternatives on the market? The main alternatives being foam glass and laid with aggregate blocks or medium density blocks. Well if we look at this firstly in terms of part A structure Part A states that blocks used in Ireland must have a minimum compressive strength of 7.5 newtons per millimetre squared. If we look then at Appendix D of Part L, where a lightweight block has been used, the thermal conductivity of that lightweight block must be 0 0.2 or better. So we look then the maximum compressive strength of a foam glass block is 3 newton, so it doesn't comply in here. The thermal conductivity of a foam glass block is better than 0 0.2, so we're okay in here. Move on then to lightweight aggregate blocks. 7.5 newton is achievable with lightweight aggregate blocks. We're okay. But the thermal conductivity of lightweight aggregate blocks is in around 0 0.33 watts per meter Kelvin. So we don't complain. If we look then at Quinlate, 7.5 Newton is achievable. We use our B7 block. And the thermal conductivity of our B7 block is 0 0.19 watts per meter Kelvin, which does complain. So based on these two criteria, Quinlate blocks is the only product that picks both boxes.